and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to do a Friday Leads video. So when I was looking at the list of books that I'm currently reading and the books that I have uh, lined up to start next, I realized they were actually all fiction titles. So this is going to be a fiction heavy reading update and I can't wait to share what I'm currently reading and the next couple of books that are on my docket. I have been in a little bit of a reading slump this spring so far, so I am returning to some of the genres that I know uh, I always enjoy and that are quick reads for me, like mystery and romance, uh, to try to kind of kickstart my reading mojo again and uh, get me out of this reading slump so that I can have a really productive uh, summer of reading because I have some of my favorite readathons. Obviously, I mentioned in my last video that I'm going to be hosting Montgomery May which is a Lucy Maud Montgomery themed readathon that I'm co-hosting with four other booktubers in the month of May. And then of course, Jane Austen July in July. And those are uh, some readathons that I'm really excited about and I want to have uh, a wonderful reading month for. So I really need to get myself out of this reading slump and back devouring books. So the first book that I'm gonna talk about today is Murder in Mesopotamia by Agatha Christie. This is a Hercule Poirot mystery. I believe it's the 14th book in the Hercule Poirot series, but I haven't been reading them in order. I've just been picking them up kind of as the mood strikes me, as I hear about them, as they seem seasonally appropriate. This mystery centers around uh, a group of people that are at an archeological dig in Iraq. And it's narrated by a nurse that has been hired by the head of the archaeological dig to come kind of be a companion for his wife, who he says has some nervous complaints. And at this point, we aren't really sure how, how valid her fears are, but presumably there's going to be a murder. So presumably those fears are quite valid and are not, in fact, just neurosis. Uh, I'm 15% of the way through and I'm listening to this on audiobook and I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, I haven't yet got to the murder and that's one of the things I love about reading Agatha Christie books is I feel like in a lot of modern mysteries and thrillers uh, the murder takes place right at the very beginning but I love in Agatha Christie books sometimes it's like 20, 25, all the way up to 40, 50 percent of the way through before the murder takes place. Sometimes you're not even 100% sure which character is going to be murdered. And I love that there is uh, so much character building and kind of tension building before the murder takes place so that when Hercule Perot arrives to do his investigation, you already know a lot of the main characters and suspects and can have theories formed in your brain. So as always, I'm thoroughly enjoying this mystery so far and Agatha Christie, especially on audiobook, is quickly becoming one of my surefire reading slump busters. Then the next book that I have on the go right now is A Convenient Fiction by Mimi Matthews. This is the third book in her Parish Orphans series which centers around four men who grew up together in an orphanage and then we follow them as they uh, seek romance in their own ways. So like I said this is the third book in the series and I've really enjoyed the first two books so I am uh, enjoying continuing on with these characters, although this one is a little bit less of a direct sequel. The first two books, uh, the characters were really intertwined between those two stories, but in this third book the main male character had left the community that the orphanage was in when he was uh, still quite a young man, and so we haven't yet reconnected with those other characters, although I'm sure there's going to be some sort of tie-in towards the end of the book. So right now I'm about 20% of the way through and our two love interests have met and they are kind of in the middle of some intellectual sparring right now because uh, he is returned to England as a bit of a fortune hunter who is targeting this young woman who is going to inherit a country estate and our female character is uh, an impoverished perfumer's daughter who is the companion slash chaperone for this young woman and is intent on protecting her from what she sees as his predatory intentions. So it's going to be fun following along with the plot and seeing how their interests switch towards each other. I think this is going to be the fifth book by Mimi Matthews that I have read and she's definitely an author that I have come to view as a reliable, uh, sweet, closed-door romance author. And especially coming out of a reading slump, I love tearing through some of her 
Victorian romances because they read really quickly and they are enjoyable. And then the third book that I have that I'm currently reading is The Vatican Candidate, A Harper and Blake Mystery by Paul Byers. This is a book that I received as a digital advanced reading copy, so an eARC via NetGalley uh, in exchange for reading it and giving it my honest review. I am 51% of the way through right now and it's definitely not exactly what I thought it was going to be when I picked it up. In my mind it was kind of going to be more of a dual timeline book with an equal focus on the present day and historical fiction, uh, but it's definitely like 95% set in the present day and it's very much a thriller so it's very suspenseful. There is some graphic violence, graphic crime scenes, uh, and uh, a fairly stressful plotline. There's been murder, there's been attempted kidnapping, there's been uh, bomb explosions so far, so it's a little bit more of a stressful read than I had anticipated that I was picking up, uh, which is why it's taking me a little bit longer because sometimes I'm just getting uh, too nervous to continue on and I have to take a break and return to a reliable sweet romance. Uh, but I am curious to see where all the threads of this story are going to go and the way it's subtitled A Harper and Blake Mystery make me think that this is the kickoff of a new mystery series by this author. So if I end up enjoying it, it's going to be one that I could continue on with and uh, that's also kind of a clue that presumably both of our main characters are going to survive to the end of the story so I don't have to be as worried about uh, each little incident that they get into. So the blurb for that is April 1945, Europe is in ruins and Berlin is burning. As the Red Army closes in on the last few blocks surrounding the Führerbrunker, a famous aviatrix lands her light aircraft in the center of the shattered German capital. Two days later, she takes off again. With her is a man called Heinrich Bechmann, SS mass killer and personal bodyguard to the German Chancellor Adolf Hitler, and with Bechmann is a file of documents. Fast forward to the fall of 2018, when Pope Francis announces that he intends to open the Vatican's secret archives to researchers and historians investigating relations between his predecessor, Pope Pius XII, and the Nazi regime. A week later, a masked gunman kill five people in an isolated Jesuit retreat in the mountains of Sicily. And two weeks after that, the body of a celebrated British historian is discovered in a beach house on Long Island. Aidan Blake, ex-Royal Marine and brother of the dead historian, believes there is a mysterious link between these events stretching across 75 years of history. He's right, and history itself will provide the clues. The trail will lead him and his brother's New York-based researcher, Hannah Harper, across the Atlantic to the hidden bunkers of Berlin, a Gothic castle in South Tyrol, Rome, Sicily, and deep into the past in a bid to find his brother's killers and expose a neo-fascist plot to kill the present pope and replace him with someone more conducive to the party's own political views and ambitions. So if I had read the blurb, uh, I might have guessed that it was going to be kind of more thriller uh, based, but I just saw 1945 and the word Vatican in the title and requested it on NetGalley. Luckily, since I do really enjoy mysteries, that wasn't entirely a disappointing switch of genre. I just had to make the mental shift uh, towards what I was actually going to be reading. Uh, and now that I am uh, fully embracing this as a, a modern day thriller with kind of these historical elements brought in when needed, when it connects into what they are researching and kind of what they're uncovering, I'm really enjoying it. And right now uh, our characters are on the run between Berlin and Northern Italy, so I'm enjoying those European travel adventure descriptions. And our main character is also making some family history discoveries, which as we know, I love when genealogy or family history is woven into a story. And so I'm really enjoying that as a side plot, our character Hannah is learning more about her grandmother's childhood during the war. Her grandmother was a young Jewish girl growing up in Germany who during the Holocaust escaped to Rome and then onwards to the UK at some point. And Hannah's family history has always been kind of shrouded when she would ask her mother questions, she wouldn't really get answers. So she's uh, uncovering brand new information to her about her grandmother and her great grandparents and their story both before the war and during the war and how they were impacted. So that element is really enjoyable to me and is helping to flesh Hannah out as a character. One of the things that um, sometimes I don't enjoy as much about thrillers is that they are very uh, heavily plot-based and we don't get 
as much about the characterization and I do enjoy knowing more about characters and their motivations and their history. So I do like that we are getting uh, more of those details about Hannah and her family history, as well as uh, all these more dramatic plot elements. So I think I mentioned that I am 50% of the way through and I'm reading this obviously digitally and it's definitely one that I am enjoying so far and I'm looking forward to seeing where the conclusion is going to go. This actually is a pretty short book so I think now that I am um, thoroughly invested in the plot and have kind of got up to speed with what's happening, I think the second half of the book is going to absolutely fly by as uh, I race along with the characters to figure out what exactly is going on. So those are the three books that I already have on the go and then I thought I'd also share uh, the next couple of books that are on my docket uh, that I will be picking up this weekend as I finish off these three. So the live show for the Follow Us to Fairacre read-along that I am co-hosting with Kate Howe, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, Angie from Literary Labors, and I believe this month our guest host is going to be Janelle. Uh, that live show is coming up this next Friday, so I need to pick up the Fairacre books by Miss Reed that we are reading for this month. Uh, again, this month we have two books uh, lined up to discuss because one of them is a Christmas novella. So the first book, which is book 11 in the Fairacre series, is Further Afield. And I can't wait to start this book because our main character, Miss Reed, uh, is going on vacation with her friend Amy to the island of Crete. And I just think that that is going to be really unique to be leaving Fairacre and to have these two characters exploring a Mediterranean destination. Uh, I'm curious about what um, kind of their travel experience will be like. I'm not quite sure where we are in in-universe time. I think this book was published at the end of the 1970s, but I don't know if it's the 70s for the characters. I feel like it's maybe the early 60s for the characters. So I'm not sure exactly what their travel arrangements will look like, if it's going to be flying, if it's going to be a train, I'm not sure. And then I just am really looking forward to the descriptions of Crete. I don't think I've ever read a book set in Crete, so I am looking forward to the descriptions of the island and I'm hoping for some delicious food writing as well. And then the other book is the 12th book in the series, which is No Holly for Miss Quinn, which is again one of those uh, books that kind of is straddling the line between short story and novella that's Christmas themed, uh, but because it's next in the series we're reading it in April. And we're following Miss Quinn when her plans for a quiet Christmas are appended by a phone call from her brother asking her come and babysit her nieces and nephews over Christmas because his wife has had a health emergency. Miss Reed's Christmas writing is very very cozy and I'm looking forward to having a little bit of Christmas in April. And then lastly the other book that I want to pick up once I finish those three currently reading titles is The Solitary Summer by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This is a direct sequel to the book that I read last April, Elizabeth and Her German Garden and is again uh, a fairly loosely veiled autobiographical uh, story based on Elizabeth's experience being married to a German count. After reading An Enchanted April two years ago I've kind of decided that uh, April is going to be my von Arnhem month and I'm just going to slowly read through her bibliography in publication order uh, one book every April for the next however many years. This is the second book that Elizabeth von Arnhem published and it was originally published in 1899 so it's just squeaking in as a Victorian classic. And like Elizabeth and her German garden, this book is presented as a series of diary entries, I believe spanning from May to September or October, so kind of spanning that solitary summer. and. Uh, apparently has lots and lots of beautiful garden descriptions. That's one of the things I have loved about both of the two Elizabeth von Arnhem books that I've read and it's the reason that I love reading her in April because uh, April in Canada is a month a kind of a transition. The snow is mostly melted, the grass is kind of starting to green up again but at least where I live we don't really have flowers up yet, we definitely don't have leaves on the trees or blossoms on the trees or anything like that. Uh, most of those won't come until more towards the end of May 
Uh, actually, over the Easter long weekend, we had a ton of rain and that finally got rid of the last of the snow and I can see the green patches starting to come in the grass. So April is always when I am craving spring, but it's not really uh, manifesting in my physical surroundings yet. And I really enjoy picking up books that have uh, lush descriptions of spring and flowers and greenery and gardening, <laughs> walking outside, picnics. Um, those are all things that were in Elizabeth and her German garden that I am looking forward to in the solitary summer. So I can't wait to get back with our quasi-fictional Elizabeth and read all about her gardening plans and her summer with her children and her husband and get back into Elizabeth von Arnhem's beautiful, beautiful nature writing. So those are the books that I am either currently reading or are on my lineup up next to pick up probably starting this weekend. Uh, I would love to know what you're currently reading, if you're enjoying it, what books you have planned for the next week or so. And until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book. Bye.